What's up guys, if you're interested in getting sweet altars like these every month, you can do so by visiting our Patreon at patreon.com slash it resolves. What is going on, everybody? Welcome to episode 300 of our Crackerback series. We made it to 300. That is insane to me. Thank you so much for all of you guys who watch these on a somewhat regular basis, at the very least. We really appreciate it. The support has been phenomenal, and it because of you guys, we're able to open up cool stuff like this. Obviously, Lorwyn is the pack we are opening up today. That's not something we ever really get to open up. I think we may have done it like once. Uh, it's just so expensive to get these packs. But thankfully, with your support, we're able to get there. Thank you. Thank you. But we are always going to be going through these as if it is a pack one, pick one scenario. So our first goal here is to figure out what our pack one, pick one would actually be if we were drafting this set. I'm going to go ahead and tell you I am very out of my element with this set. I did not play during this time. I had a few of the cards, but I really didn't know this set very well. So we're going to do the best we can. Uh, I don't really know. I know there's some tribal synergies, things like that. Obviously, here we got fairies, but uh, we'll see what we get. There's some really cool stuff in this set, though. So get really stoked about it. Also, this is kind of an homage to uh, Throne of Eldra Eldraine, Eldraine uh, which will be coming out very, very soon. Very similar in terms of the art style and things like that that we're seeing. Uh, and I believe, I heard somewhere that it's technically on Lorwyn. I don't know if that's the case. Uh, that's I think it's a whole new plane is what I thought, but correct me if I'm wrong. I have no idea. So let's open this up. Pestermite is our first common here. Uh, it's a 2-1 for 2 and a blue with flash and flying. And um, when it comes into play, you can tap or untap target permanent. Now that can be any permanent land, artifact, enchantment, anything. Not that necessarily an enchantment would be the best thing, but can be literally any permanent. Uh, not only that, but it is a 2-1 flyer with flash, which means you can leave up like a counter or something along those lines and then flash this in if you don't happen to need that counter. Lots of really cool upside with a card like this that's so flexible. Also, again, tribal stuff. Fairies are very, very popular in this set, so it would be a really nice thing to have start off uh, a draft with a fairy just to give you a little bit of direction, things like that. Um, that being said, the real reason this card is so good is because of Splinter Twin. We all know the menace that hit modern for quite a long time. This in combination with Splinter Twin just means you can get infinite pester mites and then swing in for the win immediately. Obviously, not going to happen in a, in a Lorwyn draft, but still a really, really cool, flavorful card, one that we've seen a lot of. And honestly, not a bad card at all uh, on turn three. It's a perfectly fine uh, flyer. Uh, Leaf Gilder is a 2-1 for one and a green, and you can tap to add one green to your mana pool. Uh, this is a perfectly okay mana dork. It's not as great as something like an Elvish Mystic, which can come in on turn one. Uh, those are really the prime mana dorks that you want to be getting. Uh, this being a turn two mana dork is fine. It ramps you up to turn four on turn uh, three, technically, which is nice. Uh, but I think I'd prefer the Pestermite over this. That might be incorrect. Uh, I, I just think in a ramp deck, I kind of want to get the bombs and then find the ramp because the ramp's going to be a little bit easier to find uh, since they are usually at common level versus rare or something like that. So uh, very good mana dork, but in general, I think I'd rather have Pestermite. Uh, Bogart Sprite Chaser, uh, Goblin Warrior, a 1-2 one, for 1 and a red, and as long as you control a fairy, Bogart Sprite Chaser gets plus 1, plus 1, and has flying. Uh, very, very interesting card. I don't know color synergy-wise uh, if this is something that would often get played. I feel like probably not. Uh, I feel like the fairies deck is much more blue-black, not so focused on the red. That might be incorrect. Please let me know if it is. Um, but I feel like if you have a fairy... This is probably an okay two drop. I don't think it's amazing regardless. I think, you know, if you get a two, three flyer for two mana, that's pretty solid. A one, two for two, not very good. So you probably want to be a little more defined in your deck strategy before picking up a card like this. Uh, Thieving Sprite is a 1-1 one, one for 2 and a black with flying. When it comes into play, target player reveals the top X, reveals, excuse me, X cards from his or her hand, where X is the number of fairies you control. You choose one of those cards, and then that player discards that card. So this is very much like Thoughtseize on a stick, similar, uh, and a very, very powerful card in my opinion. I think I actually like this more than Pestermite. Much more of a payoff card on turn three than Pestermite is, just because you get to not only get a 1-1 flyer out there, which is going to be fine, 
but you also get to take a card from hand and that can be a huge huge setback depending on the situation that you're in and when you can play this uh, obviously on turn three they're going to have a few options in their hand still most likely uh, and so if that's the case this is definitely definitely a powerful card i think i would take that over pestermite might be incorrect but so far that's my assessment so uh, Kinsbale Balloonist uh, is a 2-2 for 3 and a white with flying, and when it attacks, you may have target creature gain flying until the end of the turn. Uh, interesting card. I think it's pretty good. Uh, I'd prefer the Thieving Sprite, I believe, over it. Uh, but a 2-2 for 4 with flying, uh, it's a little overcosted, but I'll take it. Giving something else flying as well, though, I think is great. Uh, I do think that that just means you're going to be able to be really, really aggressive as much as possible. And that's exactly what you want to do. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, the Kithkin Soldier deck tends to be like the red-white-ish deck. Might be a little incorrect on that. I don't know if green gets splashed in there as well or another color. But uh, very, very aggressive. This kind of helps you towards that goal. I prefer to go with a little more controlling game plan. Uh, and that's just why I would take the Thieving Sprite over that. This might be an incorrect assessment, but that's just kind of my my take on it. Um, I do like being aggressive, obviously, and limited. That's what you want to do, but I'd prefer the Thieving Sprite. Uh, Bogart Loggers uh, is a 2-1 for 2 and a black. It has Forest Walk, so it's unblockable as long as your, your opponent controls a forest. Uh, then you can pay 2 and a black, sacrifice it, and destroy target Tree Folk or Forest. Very much a hate card for green, uh, and I think it's good in uh, in the situation where you're against a green deck. So I think this is much more of a sideboard card. It's interesting. Normally, when you find cards like this that are so hateful towards a particular color, they tend to be like an instant or a sorcery. It's really cool that this is a creature. I love that. I love that they put so much flavor within the creature package themselves. So love that a lot. Uh, definitely a good sideboard card. If you're in a black deck, you'll want this against a green deck, but not amazing uh, by any means in a regular uh, situation. Uh, Flamekin Brawler. As uh, a zero two for one red, and then you can pay a red and it gets plus one plus zero until the end of the turn. Uh, I think this is a great one drop actually. Uh, obviously this is going to be something that you're going to have to sink some mana into and that can kind of set you back depending on the situation that you're in, but it does give you an avenue for being really, re really aggressive, excuse me, uh, on turn two after you've played this on turn one. It just gives you an option to really pump it up, be a two, two on turn two and be able to swing in at the same time. That's pretty good. Not only that, but you can just keep pumping it up and dealing with uh, larger creatures on the field if you really need to. So if you need to leave this back as a blocker, you leave some red mana up, you might be able to trade up for something really powerful. Obviously, it's going to die pretty easily, but that trade is worth it, I think. If you're trading up, it's great. So in that instance, I do kind of like this. Again, I don't think I like it more than the Thieving Sprite. Uh, I, I just kind of prefer that game plan a little more. Uh, that, again, might be incorrect. I just I don't know, unfortunately. Uh, Tide Shaper Mystic is a 1 1 for 1 blue, a merfolk wizard, interestingly. Uh, tap it, target land becomes the basic land type of your choice until the end of the turn, plays ability only during your turn. I don't love this card. There are a lot of effects uh, that seem to get printed a lot in the older days of Magic, where it was turn basic land into another basic land and all this stuff. I never liked those effects. There are definitely instances like Forest Walk, for instance. We saw that. You can turn the opponent's uh, land into a forest and then you have an unblockable creature. That's fine, but that's a lot of setup with a bunch of really like low ground dorky kind of creatures. I'd rather just have some big payoff stuff with a few decent cards in between. So for me, I don't love this card. Uh, definitely not something I'm interested in. Uh, Root Grapple as uh, a tribal instant, uh, which is really, really cool. It's a tree folk instance, so technically if you're playing tree folk uh, and there's something that says you get a bonus from playing a tree folk, this does trigger that. Uh, it is four and a green, and it says destroy target non-creature permanent. If you control a tree folk, uh, draw a card. So interesting that it only hits non-creature permanents. I find that's definitely significantly worse uh, in limited in, in particular because there's so many creatures in limited. That really is the focus. Uh, if you do have a tree folk, I feel like it's fine. You're, you're going to be able to draw a card off of it, but it's five mana. That's a lot. Uh, it is instant speed. That's nice. I just don't, I don't think this is a great card. I think it's okay, but not amazing. Uh, tri, triclopian sight. Try uh, that. Apologize. Uh, fla it's an enchantment, uh, aura with flash for one and a white enchant creature. When it comes into play, uh, untap the enchanted creature and that creature gets plus one, plus one and has a vigilance. 
I think this is okay because you can use this as a bit of a combat trick. Uh, since it does have flash, you get to untap the creature. You can really, really surprise an opponent with this. And then it's a combat trick that sticks around, which is great. Uh, so I would value this not, uh, I would value this above regular enchant creatures as well as above just regular combat tricks solely because it does stick around. Uh, I love it for that. I don't think it's an amazing card. I think it's something that, you know, you pick up if you're in that deck, if you're in the white kind of creature heavy deck, you'll want something like this, but I'm not there yet. So I don't think this is definitely first pickable by any means. Uh, Nightshade Stinger is a one, one for one black. It has flying and it can't block. Fairly straightforward card, honestly, perfectly fine. Uh, if you're going to play a couple one drops, which generally you want two, maybe three, depending on what they are, uh, then this is a perfectly fine, just aggressive one drop. It's one that's going to get in there, start attacking. It obviously can't block, so you might as well just keep attacking with it. Uh, and then if you can maybe boost it up with some enchant creatures or some combat tricks, maybe you can get a good surprise or a kill in there. Really, really cool for that. Uh, but it's not an amazing card by any means. It's just kind of one that you would probably pick up later in the pack if you're in that fairy deck and you want some aggressive stuff. It's good for that. Love the art, though, by the way. The art through this whole set is just fantastic. Uh, Crush Underfoot is one and a red for a tribal instant. It is a giant, technically. Uh, choose a giant creature you control and it deals damage equal to its power to target creature. This is a very, very solid removal spell. Uh, if you're in the giant stack, there is a good, I think, fairly strong giant stack at the very least. Uh, and this is perfect for that, but I would prefer to be in that first. I don't want to pick this up and then not be in that deck and just not have any real way to play this. Uh, so for that reason, not going to first pick it here, but if you're in there, definitely pick it. <laughs> Glenalindra Pr Pranksters, excuse me, is a 1-3 three for 3 and a blue with flying, and whenever you play a spell during an opponent's turn, you can uh, return target creature you control to its owner's hand. This obviously has synergy with cards like Thieving Sprite, where you can play this uh, whenever whenever you play a spell during your opponent's turn. So whenever you flash something in or play an instant or something like that, you get to bounce a creature and then ideally just start replaying them for their added value. So lots of really cool stuff here. Good synergy card for the fairy deck. And I think better than Thieving Sprite just because of what it can enable. Uh, so I'm in for this. I do like it. It's not a powerhouse card by any means. It is just a 1-3 for 4 with flying. But it's going to probably live a while in the air because it does have that 3 toughness. And you're not really using it as an attack dog. You're using this as much more of a setup synergy kind of card, which just seems fun. I love that. Uh, Incremental Growth is a sorcery for three and two green. Put a 1-1 counter on target creature, two 1-1 counters on another target creature, and then three 1-1 counters on a third target creature. So lots of counters to be thrown around. Uh, the key here is that you have to have multiple creatures out to make this really good. Uh, if you don't, not quite as powerful. Uh, obviously, I don't even know technically if you can tech really play it because you do have to have all three targets. Regardless, uh, really, really powerful card if you can get it to work. I like the Pranksters better. Uh, per personally, this is just straight up a powerhouse card, uh, which is good. That's definitely, you kind of tend to want to go straightforward and limited, but the Pranksters are fun. I'm going to go Pranksters. I found like, I, that seems like a good idea. Uh, and then our rare here. Okay, well, this is definitely going to be our pick, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, Mirror Entity is a 1-1 one, one for 2 and a white. It's a changeling, so it's every card type. Uh, it's a fairy, it's a giant, it's everything. Uh, and you can pay X and creatures you control uh, become XX and gain all creature types until the end of the turn. So what you can do is flood the board, play this, pay X, which you can do right away because you don't have to tap this. Uh, and then just swing in for the win. Lots of powerful synergy stuff there. And it just fits into any archetype if you're going tribal, which you tend to do in this set. Uh, it just makes it so, so easy. So Mirror Entity, uh, and then of course our beautiful Avatar token. Definitely Mirror Entity is the pick for me. Uh, feel free to let me know in the comment section if you happen to disagree, but I think that's a pretty easy first pick. Uh, but if you enjoyed this episode, please make sure to leave a like or a comment down below. Thank you so much, guys, for helping us get to 300 episodes. Uh, the support that you guys have shown, especially in the last uh, few months, has been absolutely phenomenal. We really, really appreciate it. So thank you again. Really, really appreciate appreciate it but make sure to subscribe of course if you're not uh we really do have a lot of content coming out and some ideas for some new stuff now that we actually have uh, a little bit more of a support and so we just we want to give back as much as we can and i think uh we've got some ways to do that so uh with that i think i'm gonna get out of here though thanks so much for watching guys i'll see you in the next crack a pack episode